Hey guys, it's Jerry the Snake Man today, and today we're going to be talking about um, some of these shows that are on TV. Now, the Snake Man here, I really don't like having cable TV. I've been without TV for a long time. Uh, got tired of watching the shows, got tired of watching how the, these uh, TV shows, uh, different channels and that, they, the way they uh, exaggerate snakes, they make them look mean and nasty. Um, they really make everything look really uh, hard to do and dangerous and all that stuff. And uh, I don't like it myself. Um, I haven't had TV for a long time and recently I got TV back. And um, I got the uh, privilege, I guess, if you want to put it, to watch a show that was called Venom Hunters. Um, actually, uh, believe it or not, Snake Man here gets asked quite a few, quite a, a few different times. Um, if he will participate in some of these shows that these channels are making. And the last show that I was actually asked to participate in was Venom Hunters. And uh, I contacted them, I asked them what they wanted uh, me to do or what the show was about. And when they told me and they wanted me to be going out there catching Venom and snakes out in the wild, I uh, politely declined. I said, this isn't for me, this is not what I do. I do educational things, I try to educate the public, um, and I try to give them factual information and uh, not exaggerate everything. Secondly though, Snake Man, this fat boy right here, okay, is not going to take his fat butt and chase out into the wild to find venomous snakes. If I want venomous snakes, they're called Reptile Expos, I can go there. I can get captive bred healthy snakes um, that weren't taken from the wild and that's where I get my snakes from, okay guys? I don't go out and, and take them from the wild when there's no reason to. There's plenty of breeders of these snakes that you don't need to do that. So uh, just stay tuned and I'm going to show you and kind of like pick apart this movie. I mean I'm kind of like uh, really upset about when I saw this. I only saw the second half hour of it and that's all I needed to see to see how exaggerated and stupid this show was. Um, so stay tuned and I'm going to, like I said, kind of like uh, pick apart what's going on with these things because I think they're totally ridiculous. They're not educating the public properly. So uh, please watch. Okay, in the second half hour of that show, what I saw was uh, three different people. The first guy was a guy trying to collect uh, water moccasins. It was an older gentleman with another guy. They were walking through the swamp waters trying to collect water moccasins and um, first of all Discovery Channel or uh, what, I think it was Discovery Channel this was on. I'm not even sure anymore. There's so many of them. But uh, whoever you were that produced this show and made this show, okay? If you needed water moccasins to milk, uh, you should have came in and you should have asked me when you contacted me that you needed water moccasins. I could have saved you from shooting that whole thing, making that poor guy go out into the wild and try to, to search for water moccasins. Come here, let me grab the camera real fast. And I normally don't do this, moving the camera around because it makes me sick. But um, in, this can, in this enclosure here, I have a water moccasin. That's a female that's right there. And if I turn you around over here, I'm going to bring you down here. Um, in that bottom one right there, we have a male mo water moccasin that's down there as well. So if you really needed them, um, you should have just came and contacted me. And I would have, uh, you know, said, here, we'll save this poor guy the hassle of going out. But the thing is, you got this poor guy out in the wild. And what do you got him out there in the wild with? You got him out there in the wild with a backpack, some pillowcases, and a snake stick, okay? You're talking about a water snake that moves very quickly through water and you're trying to catch him with a snake stick? This is ridiculous. They hold, grab him with a snake stick, lift him up, they grab him by the tail. The guy almost gets bit one time. He gets his hand so close. Um, you guys, I don't know if you've heard of these. Um, see right here? These things are great. These are called tongs. And look at this. Watch, watch. Oh wow, see how that works? So good. You could just reach down, grab that water moccasin and pick him up without having to chase him through the water because he's not going to stay on a stick, okay? Grab him with one of these and you could have put him into the bag in your pillowcase, tied it off and bam, you would have been done and it would have been so much safer. But um, I know you guys probably don't order this professional stuff. This is actually from Midwest or tongs.com. 
They are the A1 premier place to buy this quality professional snake handling equipment. So you guys might want to consider purchasing some of this before you send these guys out into swamps and everything else where they're, they're risking, literally risking their lives that possibly to get bit for no reason, okay? Okay, then the second guy I'm watching is two guys and a girl, I think one's his daughter, um, and they're out catching, they need to fulfill and catch two Western Diamondback rattlesnakes, all right? This is a very hard thing to do to catch two of these Western Diamondback rattlesnakes, considering they're a big nuisance in Texas. They're all over the place. They're not hard to find generally, but they're way out in somewhere trying to hunt these things down and catch two. Again, guys, you should have told me when you contacted me that you needed to do this, because you know what? I have three right here, okay? Again, I hate moving the camera around like this, but let me grab the camera really quick and let me show you here. And also, not only would have you got three Western Diamondbacks, but you would have also got two of them are albinos, okay? So they're even super cooler. If you look in here, you'll see in there my little cave, there's one albino Western Diamondback rattlesnake with plenty of venom. Then we're going to move you over here. And in this cave right over here, there's a second. This is a normal Western Albino diamond battle rattles Blah, blah, blah. Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. Very cool. And we're going to go down here and this is the third one. And he's hiding in his cave right there. And that is number three. So we have three of these. You didn't have to go out to look to collect these guys because wham, bam, here they are. We have them all ready for you. Alright, so what we're going to do now is because not only did this guy and his daughter and this other guy have to go out in the wild and try to collect all these and he could have got them right here or you could go to any reptile expo and pick them up usually they're 25 bucks they're very cheap they're great rattlesnakes the western diamondbacks are very quick aggressive rattlesnakes so they don't sell for a lot and they're very common so it's not something you had to go out but what i'm going to do now is after they caught these two rattlesnakes they brought them back to the house and he said all right now here's what we're going to do we're going to milk them and this is so dangerous and blah 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 and they built this whole big thing up so what did they do they took the diamondback rattlesnake and they had it by the tail and they're trying to pin its head now they're trying to pin this poor diamond battle rattlesnake's head down with the end of a snake stick which is going to hurt this snake is painful you guys never heard of these again this is a homemade one doesn't cost much to make one of these a piece of wooden down a little thing here that you hang hooks in your garage to hold your rakes and stuff and some surgical tubing this is called a pinning stick guys pins the head down very well and you can pick it up with no trouble but now I'm going to get out my Western Diamondback Rattlesnake and I'm going to show you how very simple and safe it is to milk one of these snakes. They made it sound like this is dangerous and only the craziest person in the world will do it. Stay tuned for one minute, let me get him out, I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, now I will give these guys credit though. These guys are hunting down the Western Diamondbacks. They were actually smart enough to be wearing some kind of protection. And what they were wearing is these are called gaiters. These are really great. These actually wrap around the leg. Um, they cover part of the shoe here, um, or your boot, whatever you got on. These are bite proof, so if a Western Diamondback were to strike at uh, the lower part of their leg here, they would have actually had some type of protection where uh, most of the other guys weren't wearing anything. Now, the thing they could have been wearing, though, and even up to something as simple, which would give them a little bit of protection, was it, it, it would be at least a, a leather welding glove would give you some sort of protection. But these here, which are the hex armor gloves, will give you a lot of protection because these are five times needle stick proof. You can actually take the syringe and jab it right into the glove and it'll just bend the syringe over. So they are extremely pro uh, uh, protective, especially when you're grabbing a rattlesnake behind um, the head. See, I was stupid enough to get bit. That's what happened to my thumb here. Look at that. That's from a rattlesnake bite. As a matter of fact, that's from a western diamondback rattlesnake bite because I was stupid enough to grab behind the head like this gentleman did without 
wearing some type of protection and I got bit and, oh, and this guy almost got bit and if you watch some of the other videos you will see guys grabbing snakes behind the head where that snake is nimble enough to turn around and then jab a thing or two into you not the best way to do that but let me show you here what is the best way to do that and we're going to get him out here and if you watch when you watch this this video of them you're going to see they make it sound like you got to be crazy in the head there's no way anybody can should be milking these snakes and and that uh, it's very dangerous and very complicated and it's really not i'm going to show you how it's done guys just stay tuned for one minute we're going to show you how we milk these guys all right now we're going to show you how we're going to milk this guy and how very simple it is number one i'm not going to take the snake out i'm not going to try to put him on the floor and pin his head down okay with the stick and nothing like that i would have kept him in something which keeps him partially contained just like we have here all right now what i got to do though is i got to simply take my hide off of my western diamond back Okay, and this guy can be extremely aggressive when he wants to be. So don't let you think that he's a nice calm snake. And what I will do is I will hook him. And we're going to get around on him here a little bit. Now we'll pick him up. As you can see, he's right here. He's not very... Uh, aggressive at this point but we're going to move up on him nice and easy here okay and we're just going to move my hand right up behind his head whoop there we go now i get this glove off there he goes thrashing around looking trying to bite see very aggressive at this point and we move him over here and we simply Put him down there and look at him milk that venom into that container boy he's really biting down on there nice good solid bite he is already milked we put him back up here put his hide back in here and voila the milking process is done as you saw when I grabbed him and picked him up man he freaked out he tried to bite me but even if he would have got a fang anywhere near he wouldn't have got it through these gloves I wouldn't have got bit that's how you take it that's how you milk a rattlesnake or any other type of venomous snake guys protection they sell the equipment use it all right then the third couple I saw and I couldn't believe with my eyes who these guys were um, did they really have to bring a big ball python colubrid breeder out of Michigan and, his, and one of his uh, workers with them to send him all the way to Australia um, to catch two uh, elipids? I mean, come on guys, I'm sure there's a bunch of Aussies that would have worked just fine, but no, what they did. So, who they sent though, and my favorite guy was Chewy. Chewy was the assistant, okay, but Chewy does not deal with venomous snakes, alright? And they send him here to hold bags open while they try to get the snake into the bag, which is ridiculous, okay? Again, this is ridiculous. You're going to have a guy hold a pillowcase open with uh, no, no protection on his hands while you try to get an lipid to crawl in there. Again, guys, where's the professional equipment? This is so stupid. You're making something daring. Chewy, man, I don't blame you for being scared. I would have been terrified to try to do something like that, okay? They have equipment. Watch. Let me come right back. Let me show you what they got. This is amazing, okay? It's such amazing that they actually make this stuff. Okay? And again, Toms.com Midwest. They make professional snake bagging equipment. Look at this. A snake bag on a stick. It's flat. It's already open. It's very long. When you set this on the ground like this, okay, the snake can crawl right into it. You can pick it up. 
Once you pick it up, you give it one good twist, the snake is locked inside the bag. There's two bags attached here, so once you got one bag filled, you take it out. Now, what's great about this, you guys had a very venomous elipid snake inside this bag that you needed to milk. So what did you guys do? You went back, you took the snake out of the bag, okay, and you had poor Chewy trying to take what is kind of a pinning stick and nail the snake's head down, okay? not cool you know these snake these bags are even made with an extension so you can take these tubes here let me grab this tube I'm not going to take it all out but these tubes slide into this extension so you can have that snake come out of this bag go safely into the restraining tube okay and then you could work with the snake from inside the tube you did not have to have the snake and Chewy terrified of getting bit and I don't blame you man I would have now again Discovery again, or I'm not sure if it was Discovery Channel, so I don't want to make you look bad. If it was somebody else, I apologize. But um, the producers of the show, if you can't afford professional equipment, which what this is, okay, it's very simple to make your own, which is a lot cheaper. And all you got to do is this is what I've done to make my own. This is my first professional bagging equipment. It's all it is is a. Um, a body pillowcase because they're extra longer. I have a darker one so it it stays darker so the snake will want to crawl in. And then wapha, this is actually a fishing net. Okay, you can extend it out. You can make the handle go longer if you want to here. All I did was cut the net off. All right, I secured the bag on the net here with some. Um, these uh, clips and all you have to do again is just simply hold this down and let the snake crawl into it twist it around and voila you got yourself a snake already in the bag nobody's hands are by the openings by any means where they can get bit okay guys so if you can't afford to produce a show and buy the equipment that you really truly need um, you can make it yourself all right so you guys again man these shows they're getting out of hand um they mislabel snakes i saw one that was uh, a new show that was labeling a snake as a being a uh, a king cobra and i identified it immediately as a monocle cobra all right nowhere the monocle cobra and the king cobra don't even look close okay um I, uh, when this guy, um, these two guys were doing this Western Diamondback and they were milking it, one guy was holding the cup. Now, I have had my wife held the milking cup, okay, but when she does it, she wears a pair of gloves because I don't want her getting bit. And what happened with this guy was, is when he, the snake, went to bite into the, 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 the jar there, it overbit the jar completely and it sprayed venom all over the guy's hand who was holding it. Now this guy, rightly so, rushed into the kitchen there to rinse and wash his hand off right away. But the guy who was milking the snake, and this is misinformation people, stood there and said, well we'll know in a half hour if you got any venom in you. Okay? Now, this is a Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. It is a hemotoxic venom. If he had any open wounds on that hand whatsoever, it's not going to take 30 minutes to find out if he had any venom get into his system. It's going to burn. It's going to hurt. I know. I've been bit by a Western Diamondback, okay? He's going to know immediately. It's not going to take 30 minutes to find out. Now, if it's cobra venom, that's a different story. Cobra venom sometimes doesn't have uh, a, a destructive reaction that hurts as much uh, right away. So that may take some time to realize that. But being that was a rattlesnake, he would have known right away. All right. So what I'm saying, guys, is these shows are getting way out of hand. They're mislabeling snakes. They're giving a lot of misinformation. They're over dramatizing stuff. And this is BS. Okay. Like I always say, and I always will say, keep it real. Okay. Some people might say, and that's why I brought it up at the beginning, well, maybe, Snake Man, you're just jealous because you ain't doing this stuff. No, I turned them down. And let me tell you something. If I want, I will turn them down over and over again. If I want to do and be on TV, I can go on TV anytime because you know what? 
friend of mine has a show. It's called Keeping Country Strong. It's on cable TV. It's on, and I can get on that show anytime I want to bring and educate people about my snakes. Okay, and I can, and they have over a million viewers that watch that show. All right, but when I go on there. That's true facts. There's nobody telling me what I can and can't say, okay? So I'm going to put out true information. I'm going to show the people the real side, the good stuff, the bad stuff about snakes, okay? I'm not over going to dramatize anything that I do. So again, what I want to say is, guys, you want to watch these shows, that's fine. But keep in mind, though, that these are what's getting the public to turn around and look at snakes and say, no, I don't like snakes. These are bad, okay? Because look how dangerous they are in everything else and I'm not saying that snakes can't be dangerous but I'm saying is that they make it appear to be a lot more than it is so as the snake man always says we're going to keep it real that's what we're doing when I do my videos and everything we're keeping it real okay we're not making it look more than it is if something happens to become dangerous and that's what's going to happen and I'm going to tell you and normally when something becomes dangerous it's because I messed up it's not because of the snake it's because I messed up I've learned to use all the proper safety equipments I've learned to have the professional handling tools and everything else and that's why I haven't been bit and I've only been bit once in my 35 career, 35 years career of uh, handling venom the snakes and everything else so I think I got a really good record and I've never ever got anybody else bit in my entire life okay so we want to keep it real if you like what you see click the like button if you want to subscribe to my channel click uh, the subscribe button and we thank you for watching snake clips and making us uh, we're becoming really popular um, if you got a Facebook and you want to put this on your Facebook page we'd really appreciate that too because face man doesn't do social media again I want to be out there I want to put out this information but I don't really care if I have a million viewers or I have five viewers if I have five viewers I'm still going to make these clips for you alright guys take it easy have a wonderful day Okay guys, I want you to see here, look at the amount of venom that we got out of that rattlesnake. See that? That is quite a bit. Alright, and as I always say, my rattlesnakes are hot. They are not devenomized. I don't yank their fangs out or anything else. If they bite me, I'm going to get a load of venom. So you just take all the precautions you can.